Hello! We are going to start talking about principles of geology. So, we're going to start with geologic processes. And before we even get into geologic processes, we're going to start with a review of basic concepts like the four layers of Earth. So, I'm sure you've heard this before, so that's why I'm calling it a review. Um, starting with the innermost layer, or layers, since you can break it up into two separate layers, you've got the inner and outer core. Uh, both layers of the core are made of nickel and iron. Um, it's very hot down there, thousands of degrees Celsius. We have never traveled to the core, and we know what it's made of based on the way that different types of waves are refracted by the material down there. Um, and reflected back to us. Uh, so like I said, the core is broken up into both the inner and the outer core. The inner core has the highest temperature. Um, even though it is the hottest, it is also a solid um, because of all the pressure that is being exerted upon it. The outer core is more of a liquid. Not really that significant. So let's talk about the mantle. The mantle is the thickest of all four of the layers of the earth. Um, <clears throat> And what's inside the mantle, of course, is magma. And magma is the same thing as lava. Lava is what we call the material when it's on the surface. Magma is what we call it when it's stored under the surface of the earth. The mantle is important because the driving force for the movement of tectonic plates originates here in the mantle. And the mantle, the upper portion of the mantle is known as the asthenosphere. Um, it's a, like it says here, plastic-like layer. What that means is that it's malleable or moldable, movable, whatever synonym you want to use here. And so the magma in the mantle flows or it moves. And as that magma moves, that's what's causing the tectonic plates that sit on top of it to move. Um, so I know when you think of lava, it's like free-flowing and oozy. Um, but all magma is not quite as liquidy um, as what we picture when we see lava flowing. It can be much more viscous, much more thick. And so the upper layer of the mantle, where the asthenosphere is, there's a little bit more flow. And so the magma can move a little bit, and that's what causes the tectonic plates to move. Um, and our outermost layer of Earth, of course, is the crust, which is where we are right now. Take a second and think of, try to think of, the most abundant element in the crust. It's not carbon, it's not nitrogen, it's not hydrogen, it's actually oxygen. Um, the oxygen is able to form a lot of compounds, bonds with other things, magnesium oxide, silicon oxides, things like that. Um, what's important for us with the crust is that there's two types of crust. Oceanic crust and continental crust. I have them listed opposite. Continental crust, which is obviously where the continents are, where we are right now, um, is very thick. Oceanic crust is much thinner than continental crust. However, the density is different. Um, continental crust, even though it's really thick, it's got a lower density, and that's due to the different minerals that are found in the crusts. Oceanic crust is comprised mostly of basalt, and those minerals are very dense. Um, continental crust is mostly comprised of uh, granite rocks, which are less dense than basalt. And this density will come into play when we start talking about different types of plate boundaries. And so this little diagram here is just illustrating the relative thickness of continental crust versus the thin oceanic crust. And this is just a diagram showing you, again, the different layers of the Earth. So the Earth is constantly moving. Yes, it's spinning. Yes, it's revolving around the sun. But the, the crust itself is constantly moving under our feet. And the reason why that's moving is due to a process known as convection convection currents, convection cells, whatever you want to call it. I'll give you a really easy example of convection. Hot things rise, cool things sink. That's what convection is. 
hot things, whether it's magma, air, water, whatever. Hot things are less dense than cooler things. So hot things rise, cool things sink, making a cell or a circle. You've experienced convection cells if you've ever looked at a lava lamp. The way a lava lamp works, you've got the light bulb in the base of the lamp. The light bulb heats up the lava in the lava lamp. That hot lava rises to the top of the lamp where it cools a little bit, and then it sinks back down to the bottom. And so that cycle just keeps repeating. That's what convection is. If you have a house with really high ceilings, if you were to take the temperature at the top of the ceiling, you would probably see that it's a little bit warmer than down at ground level because hot air rises. That's what convection is. And so in the mantle, the lower part portion of the mantle is much warmer than the upper portion of the mantle. So the magma heats up, the magma rises and pushes up against the tectonic plates that are part of the crust that are floating on the mantle. Think of it as an analogy like this. Um, you've got a scoop of ice cream, and then on that scoop of ice cream, you place, you take a chocolate chip cookie and you break it into a couple of pieces. So that chocolate chip cookie is gonna represent the tectonic plates, and the ice cream is going to represent the asthenosphere, the magma in the upper mantle. So as that ice cream melts, the pieces of the chocolate chip cookie are gonna kind of melt away, float away from each other. And then the continents themselves would be the chips that are embedded in the cookie. And so the reason why the continents move is because the plates move. The reason why the plates move is because of convection currents. And so everything is connected together. The plates are moving somewhere about the same rate at which most people's fingernails grow, which is anywhere between two and 10 centimeters per year. Some plates move a little bit faster, some plates a little bit slower, just depends, but this is the average. And this is just a diagram here showing you convection, hot magma rising and pushing against the plates, <laughs> these lovely green things, and then it cools. So convection is just simply hot things rising, cool things sinking. So this map here is showing you the rough locations of the major and minor tectonic plates. So you can see the major plates are the large ones, like the Eurasian plate, the African plate, um, the Antarctica plate, and then the smaller ones are called the minor plates, like the Juan de Fuca over in the northwest, western, northwestern United States, um, the Caribbean plate, and so on. And so kind of refer back to this picture as I'm talking about different types of plate movement or plate boundaries. So again, this is probably a review for you. Divergent boundaries are where the plates are moving away from each other. That's what diverge means. And so what happens at a divergent boundary is that when the plates move away from each other, that hot magma rises up and fills in that space. Um, divergent boundaries are creating something called the mid-ocean ridge. That is the underwater mountain chain um, that runs kind of down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, hence the name Mid-Ocean Ridge. Um, it's got the tallest mountains on Earth that would even dwarf Mount Everest. And so the magma rises up in the middle and it keeps piling up and that's what forms these giant mountains. And it also forms new seafloor. The magma rises up and kind of pushes off to the sides, pushing the old seafloor away from that gap, kind of like a conveyor belt. Um, so this picture is what I'm illustrating. So the plates, which are the gray things, are moving away from each other. Magma rises up in the middle into that rift or that separation. Um, and as the plates move away from each other, the crust or seafloor is moving away from that middle portion. Kind of, again, using the idea of a conveyor belt at the grocery store. As that magma rises up in the middle here, it can just kind of pile up on itself and form really tall volcanic mountains. If I go back to this map here, 
If you go down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean here and follow my mouse, this is where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is. This is exactly at a plate boundary. So if we were to drain the oceans, we would see that there's a huge mountain range in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And that mountain range is formed at a divergent plate boundary. And so this is just showing part of the world, showing you where the mid-ocean ridge is. So it goes down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it comes around the southern tip of Africa, up into the Indian Ocean, it goes around the southern portion of Australia, um, and then comes through the Pacific Ocean, which I know you can't see on this map. It comes through the Pacific Ocean, kind of down in the southern Pacific, and then up the coast of South America. And so this is the longest continuous mountain chain on Earth. Um, it completely surrounds the Earth. People often refer to it like the stitching on a baseball. So you've got a divergent plate boundary. Then you've got a convergent plate boundary where the plates are moving towards each other. And if we have convergent boundaries at continental crust, the two types of content or the two continental crusts will push into each other and they will form mountains. If we have a convergent boundary where you've got continental crust and oceanic crust, then something else happens because remember, those two types of crust have different um, densities. And so which one was more dense, continental or oceanic crust? If you said oceanic, you were correct. So if this one over here is continental and it's pushing against oceanic, the one that's more dense is going to sink. So in this case, oceanic crust sinks or plunges down into the mantle. And that's something called subduction. So a subduction zone is an area where the denser plate or denser crust, which is always going to be oceanic as opposed to continental, the oceanic plate gets pushed down into the mantle and it melts, it's recycled. And so you can think of the, the crust as constantly being renewed, slowly, but constantly being renewed. New crust is formed at a divergent boundary where that magma rises up and cools and forms new seafloor. And then the old crust is destroyed at a subduction zone where it plunges into the mantle and melts. So subduction is, again, where you've got continental crust and oceanic crust pushing against each other, and the oceanic crust subducts or sinks beneath the continental crust because it's more dense, and then it melts and becomes magma once again. Um, <clears throat> at subduction zones, you often have, or always have, <laughs> trenches forming. That's where you've got oceanic and continental crust. The, the trench would be kind of this gap I can't point to it because I don't have enough hands, <laughs> but the gap between the oceanic crust and the continental crust is where you have a trench, the deepest point in the ocean. But on land, if you've got two continental crusts pushing against each other, because they're the same density, you're just going to have mountains forming. Or you can have mountains forming in the ocean as well if you've got two oceanics pushing against each other because they're the same density. So convergent boundaries are where you have subduction happening. And that's what you're seeing in this picture here. Um, here's your continental crust on the right, your oceanic crust on the left. They're moving into each other and the oceanic crust being more dense, it kind of gets forced downward back into the mantle or back into the asthenosphere where it melts. And like I said, in that little gap, you do get a trench forming. I couldn't point to that with my hands. Um, and you also see a lot of volcanic activity around subduction zones because you've got all of that oceanic crust that's melting back into magma. And so you get a lot of pressure building up and that magma is released through volcanoes. And so you see a lot of underwater volcanoes near subduction zones. Well, you can also see above above water volcanoes as well. Speaking of underwater volcanoes, this one is called Brothers Volcano. It's located about 300 miles northeast of the North Island of New Zealand, and I was fortunate enough in 2018 to be on a research expedition 
uh, where we were drilling into 